Good morning, friends and family. It's Erica with Not Your Average EDC, and today we are going to do a pocket dump, but specifically a pocket dump showing what I carry every day to work. I basically have three carry sets. I have a work carry, I have a working day carry, which is like when I have a day off from my day job, but I am doing work around the campers or whatever. And then I have a hiking carry. I'll do an individual video on each one of these. Uh, the reason I have a hiking carry is because I hike a lot. I'm very active. I go on a lot of hikes with my dogs and I have a different set for that for out in the woods and stuff. But today we're going to go over my, my everyday carry for a normal average day. I work 40 hours a week, if not more. Um, so we're going to go over what I carry for a typical day of Erica. And then we're going to spin off a little bit into a topic that I really want to give my two cents on, which is like, what even is EDC at this point? Because I think it has really gotten out of control in some senses. And I wanted to just talk about that a little bit in the second half of the video. So let's just go over my tools real quick and what I carry during the work week. So I always have a pocket knife, go figure. <clears throat> and right now I'm carrying two because I'm doing some testing. Typically I would only carry one, but I'm doing a comparison between K390 and Rex45. And because I do a lot of knife testing on the channel, I it it's not rare to see me with two pocket knives. Is it a necessity for my work week? No. But because this channel tests a lot of knife steels and knife models, we are carrying two knives. The next thing that I have is my... Nice Guy Machine Company, Plain Jane Bar. This is a pry bar. I believe it is five inches long. And it's very lightweight, very useful. And I really, really enjoy this. I have been testing this for an extremely long time. I highly recommend it. It is my favorite pry bar. A lot of people don't find the need for a pry bar in their everyday life. I surprisingly do. I live in a camper. There are always covers and things to pry apart and things get stuck. And I, I really do actually use a pry bar very, very often. It does save me from possibly breaking my uh, pocket knife edge. And there are plenty of uses for a pry bar for me specifically. Then I have my wallet. This never, ever, ever changes. This is my fail-safe good Sidewinder wallet. I have a little Ultim bead on there from Urban Carvers. I always carry cash. That's the wallet. Then I have my <clears throat> Knipix. 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 The ongoing saga of these pliers. Uh, I carry these every day. These are my little Cobra pliers. And I use these very, very often. My camper runs on propane and switching the tanks over, you do need to use pliers like this to um, change the supply and stuff. So these are always in my pocket. You never know when the propane is gonna go out. Um, I don't have a gauge on mine like Nicole does, so I can't actually tell when it's gonna run out. And typically it's at the most inconvenient times and you need these to switch it over. These are also useful for many other things. F for some reason at my work, the toilet keeps like falling apart and I'm the only one that knows how to fix it. They won't. Well, we just got new parts for it, so it might be fixed now, but I was always the one that uh, was hollered for from across the building to come save the day with my pliers uh, to stop a water leak or to fix the flusher handle, whatever. So uh, I always have those. Then I have my Titan Plus from Surefire. This is a small EDC flashlight that is actually very high-powered. And 
very small, lightweight, has a couple of modes, and US made, which I really enjoy. I do have content and a review on this flashlight. This is a really good one. And then my Swiss Army knife. And I use this for everything. I have many videos on the Swiss Army knife. This one in particular is the Super Tinker. This is the one that I have found suits me the best. It has scissors, which I use very, very often. Really nice Phillips. Um, I use the reamer a lot, toothpick and tweezers, and I do have a pin in here as well that I use pretty often. Come on. Right there. That's a pin. And that's it for like a typical work day, okay? Um, I do not carry my Victorinox Spirit X on a regular basis, at least right now, just because I have paired the Swiss Army Knife with the Canipix. And this duo is working really well for me. But on occasion, I will put the Victorinox Spirit X on my belt sheath and carry that. Now, this is all I need for a typical day. And like I said, if I have a day off from work and I'm working around the campers or helping a friend with a project or something, I will have like a, a work carry, which does include the Spirit X and um, a higher powered flashlight, maybe a fixed blade, kind of like specialty stuff, right? Uh, that That's a whole different carry, and I will make a video on that. But across the board, no matter what, the one and only self-defense firearm that I carry, that I am trained with and fully comfortable with, is my Ruger LC9S, and I carry this inside the waistband on my back. This is the one and only firearm that I use. I do not feel that it is necessary to carry anything else. I have practiced with that. I am very comfortable with it. It's like second nature, pulling it out and being appropriate with it. And I do carry hollow points in that. And I always keep one in the chamber with the safety on. That's my self-defense weapon. Um, I have been in... I believe six situations in my life where I have had to pull that out. I have never fired it in a situation other than safely practicing at a range, but I have had to uh, have it out of its holster six times, aside from at the range. And yeah, so this is just the one and only... Um, firearm that I am trained with, that I am comfortable with, that I feel suits me, and that's what I carry. Now, let's get into... that That kind of flows into what I mentioned at the beginning of the video, which is this strange phenomenon of, like, almost false EDC, okay? Now, disclaimer. I... before we get into this, I'm not judging. I... Anyone in this world can do whatever they want, right? I, I don't actually care. This is just my two cents and what I have kind of noticed, I guess. But, like, literally do what you want. Like, I don't believe in judging people at all. Um, I don't like being judged, so why on earth would I do it to anybody else? This is just something I've noticed that is kind of intriguing to me, okay? A conversation piece. So... I've been on vacation from work for 12 days now. All the dogs went to foster. We get uh, a paid vacation. It's like the one and only um, break that we get basically from work and we get paid. It's a really nice perk of where I work. So I, you know, a couple of days we had some really cold days and they were, it was snowing out and I was watching some YouTube videos. And I stumbled upon one. I'm not going to mention what it is, but I'll just quickly describe what happened in it. I stumbled upon a video where there was a very large group of, it was predominantly men, and they were at a gathering, and this person was going around filming people doing, like, pocket dumps, kind of. Uh, and a lot of these people were carrying, I would guess, around three or four pounds of gear at a gathering where they weren't really doing a whole lot other than hanging out and getting to know each other. And it was so excessive. I mean, some of these people had, like, stuff in their ball caps, like, survival kits in their ball caps, like, f four, five, six knives, like, one on the neck, two on the belt sheath, three in the pockets, like, 
like boot knives. There was actually a child. He looked like he was maybe 12. Uh, he had a what looked like bulletproof vest on that had so many knives strapped to it. And when he was ax asked about it, it was like he was like neurotic, like so excited to show all these machetes and crazy things and it, I was like, whoa, this is interesting. And I was like, maybe, maybe it's just a one-off. It was just kind of concerning because it was almost like play pretend, right? But I was like, maybe this was just like a one-off video and all of these people just like purposely put all of this stuff on just to have fun for the weekend, right? But then because I watched that video, like YouTube will uh, show you other videos that you might be interested in. And so more and more of them started to pop up and I would just kind of peek at them for a couple minutes. And... I kept finding more and more videos like that, like these gatherings or pocket dumps or situations where these, where people had like excessive amounts of gear on them. Like, and that, this is coming from someone who does carry a lot of stuff sometimes. Like I, but I live a lifestyle where I would actually use all those tools. The, this is like, this is like way beyond using. This is like just an obsession, almost like a fantasy of like, well, maybe someday something will happen. Like maybe someday the zombies will come and I will have to use seven knives to cut their heads off and then hide out in the woods for three weeks. It, it, it's, it's kind of weird. But what I noticed throughout all of these videos was that a lot of these people who were absolutely fantasizing about these situations, these preppers almost, they didn't look to me like they would be able to physically even stand a situation like that if it ever did show up. So what I mean is uh, there are all different types of, there, there are different body types, like, you know, there just are. And um, th there is just a fact that, like, if, if you are healthy, you're probably more capable of many things in this life than if you are, if you are not healthy. And for me, EDC means everyday carry, but the most important part of EDC for me, aside from all the cool gear and stuff, is, like, being functional. Like, you can have 12 pounds of functional gear on you, but if your body can't function to use those inanimate objects, you're not, you're screwed. So, like, for me, I keep myself in good shape. Like, I am at a healthy weight. I am surprisingly muscular underneath all of the clothes. Um, I can run a, a good distance, I feel. I can lift heavy things. I am, I am fit, okay? And I am functional. I can move. I have flexibility. I wear clothes that allow me to be flexible and to walk and run and hike and jump and do all of these functional movements, right? And... A lot of these people that had all of this, like, functional cool gear were, like, overweight and, uh, just not even, I, I guess I wouldn't even trust them to, to protect me, let alone themselves. So, it, I feel like EDC has gotten so obsessive with all the gear, and yes, it is so fun. It is such a, it's, it's a really fun community. But if you can't even function as a human being, like, I'm, I mean, the tools really don't mean much at that point. And, you know, I, if you, if you can't even start a fire with a ferro rod or change a tire or fix a leaky ceiling or a toilet or safely carry a firearm and know how to use it correctly... I just feel that it's a little weird to be so obsessive with the community. Like, if all you can do is talk about your, like, coolest, latest and greatest knives uh, because you have the money to buy them, but then you can't even, like, change a tire or change your own oil, that to me is kind of interesting. And there are a lot of people in the community like that, like, they're... And they don't even, you know, they're, they're not even eating correctly. They're absolutely overweight. Like, if you ever put them in a survival situation or a situation where they had to actually function, like, strip away the tools, just put the human in the situation, they would not do well 
it's very it's very interesting so you can tell some of them are, are even like see, sleep deprived and they don't even eat healthy like it just um and again you know no judgment like do whatever you want in this life i just find that like people are forgetting that yes gear is so fun to talk about and to fantasize about situations and stuff but like if that ever does come up and you actually aren't mentally, emotionally, and physically prepared, all of this fun gear that we talk about, all these Swiss Army knives and pliers and lighters and flashlights that we have are really not going to do a whole lot if you would crumble under the pressure of a real-life situation. And it's just, I think we're really starting to lose sight of what matters, which is ourselves. The gear is just an add-on to the fun. But you've got to take care of yourself, otherwise you look like a fool. I was watching a video the other day. It was a, I believe, a GoPro recording of a cop who was wheeling a, um, a person up to what looked like a courthouse for maybe their hearing or something. And the guy in the wheelchair got up the moment they got to the door, and he ran and got away. Do you want to know why? Because the cop that was in charge of him, unfortunately, was so overweight that he could not actually physically keep up with the inmate and capture him. That, to me, is a little scary. Like, you can have your, your taser and your pepper spray and your handcuffs and all your stuff on you, but if you can't actually keep up with society, how are you supposed to protect not only yourself, but civilization? And that's really a, a typical thing that you can see. Like I said, all of these videos, a lot of these guys were severely overweight and had all this cool gear and stuff, but they, they, I don't know how they would even make it. And then some of them were so skinny. Oh my goodness, it looks like they were emaciated. They were so thin, no muscle mass. Um, doing the play pretend. And it's like, how are you even going to use all this gear if you can't even use your, your body correctly? So I just wanted to kind of touch on that because I think that a lot of the, the most fun videos on YouTube can be the, the big exciting ones with lots of gear and lots of money and lots of talk. But just look at who's actually doing the talking, the marketing, the advice look at the person not the gear look at the person because that can sometimes tell you a lot about uh where this information is coming from and i will give out a a positive shout out right now to someone who i genuinely think actually knows what they're talking about i will say jared from neves knives i I don't watch his channel really because it's not my type of content, but if I were looking for the type of information that he provides, I would trust him because if you notice in his videos, not only is he fit, right? He seems cognitively with it, but most importantly, he markets knives. His job is to sell you a knife or to show you a knife or review a knife so that you can decide whether or not you're making a positive purchase. And if you notice, his hands are calloused. So he has calluses all throughout his hands, even his fingertips sometimes, and his hands are kind of beat up, right? And is it aesthetically pleasing to look at beat up hands? For some people, no. You know, I don't care, uh, but some people don't. But, but that right there shows you that he actually works. He actually is doing something. Like, his hands are beat to shit. And you, you can tell that he actually works and does things, and he's providing positive serious information based off of things that he actually does he seems like a very capable person right so just keep that in mind when you're watching content and you're getting all obsessed about the edc community be very careful where you're getting your information from because if somebody cannot even take care of themselves how on earth do you expect them to to, to take care of you like to give you correct information truthful information actual use right it's just something that i i think we should talk about because there are a lot of channels right now that have the the play pretend fantasy boys and it is an odd turn of events in the community it is very odd and you really shouldn't be talking about steel performance and stuff if you don't even know how to sharpen a knife guys i'm serious like if you can't if you cannot even sharpen your knife 
and you send it off to get sharpened or uh, send it back to the factory to get a new edge put on it, why are you talking about steel? Seriously. Because part of performance is how it performs on a stone or, or a guided system, right? How do you even, you can't even contribute to that topic if you haven't even worked with the steel aside from cutting something. The other half of the cutting is the sharpening. You cut with this edge, cut, 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 cut. What happens when it's dull? Now you need to put the edge back on it. You have to return the edge. How do you do that? Sharpening. That's the full circle. It's like the circle of life. You use the knife, you sharpen it. You use the knife, you sharpen it. If you don't know how to sharpen a knife and you just use it and then toss it aside and uh, give it to someone that does know how to sharpen or you send it off to someone else or you sell it or you give it away or you just safe queen it, I'm feeling like you can't talk about the steel because you don't know the other half of it. There's, you, you've got to know how to sharpen and bring that edge back so that you can comment on the steel as a whole. It's very odd to me that people will like literally use their knives and then the moment that they lose the edge, they'll like safe queen it or, or sell it or something or send it off to get sharpened and then you never even know how that sharpening experience went. How do you know if it's chippy? How do you know how the burr moves? How do you know what kind of edge works best with it? How do you, how do you know how long it took to sharpen? How do you, how do you know anything? How, you know what I'm saying? Like the knives are meant to cut guys. I know that we love pocket jewelry and safe queens in the community, but this is a tool meant to cut. That's the whole point. So, just something to think about. Just something to think about, that's all. I, um, you know, it, it's just a conversation piece that I wanted to bring up. I've said it a million times. I, I'm not judging if you are one of those very pocket jewelry, overweight guys and you're taking offense to this and you just want to be in the community to have fun i'm i'm so sorry and i and i literally am not trying to hurt your feelings it's just like like i said I, it's just a, a weird turn of events in the community um and i and i just want everyone to take care of themselves it's 2023 it's a new year 2022 sucked um we really should be taking care of ourselves for real like like get on that diet drink more water, move your body more, learn some skills. That's so important. Learn some skills. Go out and actually do something and learn something so you can change a tire and you can protect your family and you can start a fire out in the woods and you can hike uh, four miles of elevation with without, you know, just crumbling to pieces. Uh, learn. Okay? It's 2023. Let's learn. Let's get healthy. Let's move our bodies and let's be strong, efficient members of society. We need more of those in America. Okay? God bless. Love you all. If you don't believe in God, um, I hope that crystals and sage and um, hummus treat you well. <laughs> I love you all so much. I will see you on the next video. We need to go use your shit. Whoopsh. Go use your shit. Learn how to sharpen your knives. Take care of yourself and others. I will see you on the next video. Love each and every one of you.